they're walking on? The stones? Barbarism? Ignorance? We're saving them from barbarism. Not barbarism, but that's okay. <laughs> barbarism. <laughs> saving them from ignorance. Interesting. Superstition. Like believing in like multiple, like being superstitious. Then is seen as more of a, a cultural no-no. Like things being lucky or unlucky, right? It implies like not trusting God. Um, so down here we have superstition, oppression, ignorance, barbarism, vice. And we have like social vices as things like gambling and alcoholism. And it's funny that while we're saving them from vice, we're debating having an amendment banning alcohol in America. You know? And we're sending them to civilization. That's the goal. There's one more rock that I have blurry up here on purpose. We'll see it later and we're going to laugh about American hypocrisy. It's going to be great. Um, yeah. So as noted by Mr. Ventura, we have Asian and Middle Eastern people in this basket because that's where England has imperialized. And in his basket, we have the Cubans, the Filipinos, and the rest of Latin America. Yeah. And we're hauling them up the hill. The white man's burden. It's rough. Here we have another cartoon uh, from Judge titled The Filipinos' First Bath. The oh, Filipinos' that's First that's Bath. That's and this is not racist at all. Not one bit. No, not even a little bit. Right here I notice we have the Filipinos in the back putting on their Uncle Sam costumes as they become Americanized. We have President McKinley giving them a bath, which is really awkward looking. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then rising from the jungle is the Capitol building. Interesting. Interesting. Yes? He like showers them in civilization. Yes, that's he showers them in civilization. I thought that was good, better left unsaid, but <laughs> thank you for pointing it out. Now, all of this gets actually started by uh, the conflict in Cuba. In Cuba. Now, it's important that we know that the Spanish used to have a very large empire in the Western Hemisphere. We talked about that with colonization, right? The Spanish and the British and the French and the Dutch. The Spanish used to have control over California, the Southwest, Mexico, Latin America, and much of the Caribbean. That's what the Spanish had control over. The Spanish Empire has been crumbling. Internal problems, economic problems. Uh, the Spanish are really depleted on the world stage, but they still control Cuba. Now, here's my map. Looking at this map, where is Cuba? Don't point at my wall. <laughs> south from there. Uh, south from Florida. South from Florida, then you to myself. Down, so they just dug, and they just dug a hole in Florida. And they dug deep enough down, down like this. Southward, from southward. Florida. Okay, cool. So I, should, I, should I draw on the wall? Here's here's Cuba, and the Spanish still control Cuba. Now we don't like that, but it doesn't violate the Monroe Doctrine because they were already there before the Monroe Doctrine. Such is life. So. It's important we know that the Cubans are revolting, much like we did against Great Britain, against their imperial rule. They're having their own little conflict for independence against the Spanish, and the Spanish response is incredibly harsh. They send the military, they're putting people in concentration camps, they're really trying to put down the rebellion with force. With force. Now, much of American public opinion is behind the Cubans, for a couple reasons. One. Sentimental. Emotionally speaking, we see the Cubans in their struggle and we think, hey, that was us once upon a time. We were once the little scrappy underdog fighting the imperial power. Oh, how things were great back then. And we see ourselves in Cuba, except they're just the darker version, and that'll play a role later. Economically speaking, however, a much bigger impact in that American business is heavily invested in Cuba. If Cuba can become independent, American business can be much more productive and profitable in Cuba. Things like sugar is the, is the big one uh, with Cuba in the 1890s. So American businesses trade over 100 million bucks a year with Cuba, which you kind of want to protect that investment. And 
politically speaking, getting Spain out of the Western Hemisphere would be good. One less European rival to worry about in the Western Hemisphere as we try to assert our control over our area of the world. Whoever controls Cuba controls trade into the Caribbean. Whoever controls Cuba largely is kind of like the, the, the gateway into Latin America, uh, ocean-wise. Uh, and the last factor that really plays a role is our journalism. As you guys read in your chapter, uh, American journalism plays a huge role in forming public opinion. And in this case, it's no different. We have two really important names for yellow journalism, William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer. Hearst, uh, if you're ever curious about the central coast of California, there's a place called Hearst Castle. I've uh, never been, but I hear it's gorgeous, and it's, it was, it's his like old property. Uh, and Pulitzer is an important name because they give away a prize every year for journalism. The best piece of journalism uh, gets the Pulitzer Prize, which is funny since he's not the best piece of journalism. <laughs> but uh, they're the two main newspapers in New York City. New York City, of course, is the biggest city in America. Uh, and they're trying to sell more papers. Now, what sells more newspapers, Josh? Boring stuff or exciting stuff? Exciting stuff. Now, imagine for just one moment, it's a beautiful imagination. You have no internet, you have no Twitter, you have no Snapchat, you have no nothing. That sound great? You have nothing, no internet, doesn't exist. Where would you get your news? Newspapers. And what would cause you to want to buy a newspaper? Headlines, drama, yeah, right? Like, ooh, I want to see the, oh, this is the daily drama. This is exciting. So the newspaper headlines are going to capitalize on this American desire for drama, much like a high school. Uh, and they are going to try to sensationalize all the headlines to get more people to buy their newspapers. Capitalism, kids. Yep. Good. So you're going to turn your page, and you're going to read an example of this yellow journalism. From Joseph Pulitzer, I'm going to give you four minutes, and this is from his New York World. He's competing with Hearst's New York Journal to try to incite war, to create a war, because war sells newspapers. So you're going to read an excerpt of Pulitzer's Demand for Action. I'm going to give you a whopping three minutes, because it's just a quick newspaper clip. A whopping three minutes, yes. Uh, to read it and answer those two questions, and we'll take a minute to discuss. Three minutes, go. Go. 